Today's Mercedes-Benz interview of the day brought to you by the superbly versatile all-electric EQB from Mercedes-Benz. Feeling is all Mercedes. The vehicle all-electric. Learn more at mbusa.com slash EQB. More phone calls coming up. Season three of Welcome to Wrexham. It premieres with two episodes tomorrow. That's at 10 Eastern and Pacific on FX. Also available the next day on Hulu. We got a chance to speak to the owners of Wrexham AFC and the executive producers of Welcome to Wrexham, Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhaney. We talked to them a couple of weeks ago, and here is our conversation. It's a handsome contest, and I think I'm kicking ass right now. <laughs> you sure are. Um, I sure are. All right. Um, I didn't wear my Monster Energy drink colors today. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that? No. No. That is a solid sweatshirt, actually. I, most, I do not own a neutral colored sweatshirt anymore. It just feels like we're setting the tone here, and I don't know if I like the tone that's being set. There, I would give you a yellow <laughs> card right now, Ryan. Yeah, I know much. I know better than to anger uh, Mr. Mr. Dan Patrick. Okay. I would never, never even dare. Okay. All right. Now let's play nice. Okay. Okay. Um, I believe what you're wearing is brave. That's right. all I'll say. Now that's worse than what I said. <laughs> that's a shot too. That's a shot too. That's <laughs> no, not. What are you talking about? Bravery? Wow. I could kick both of your asses if I wanted to. I do not doubt that. For okay. That at yeah. All. <laughs> yeah. Let's not do that. Okay. All right. Okay. How close did this almost not happen, Rob? Uh, oh, the entire endeavor? Yeah. Uh, not at all. I mean, it, I think it was... Uh, it was something we were going to figure out how to do. It was just a matter of how to do it. Um, but once the pieces started coming together, it was it was clear that it was uh, that it 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 it, it was going to happen. Ryan, your best day has been what with this this club? My best day, you know, it's I, I, you know the, automatically. I think you might think that it was being promoted, but but I have two best days that are tied. One is uh, I think when. The club drew against Sheffield. I just the 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 you know there's a championship league club that went up to the Premier League the, that same season and and you know the the kind of heart and soul that we saw in that field that day was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And then the other moment I think was probably Ben Foster's save against Notts County. Uh, you know, and also I you know I, I'd been privy to Ben doing an interview a year before where he said they said what would be your fictionalized greatest moment in a football game that you could ever dream up, no matter how ridiculous. And he only, he described that moment, I think, to the letter, exactly. uh, which happened to him a year later, you know, coming out of retirement like that. That was, I, I don't think I've ever been that emotional in my life. Uh, worst day, Rob. Oh, wow. Um, I would say that, that loss, um, the loss against Grimsby, town uh, in the playoff at the end of the first season was was pretty low um that was that was that was pretty low uh, i i would i would probably have to rank that as as one of the worst days of the of the experience when did you guys decide or did you decide to shift the focus from you two to the actual team the actual club from the the outside Day one yeah. yeah that was that was that was a sure thing to be mainly be, because and 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 it wasn't because we were being falsely modest or anything the, the real the, the thing that is so compelling about this town is its inhabitants and people i mean and and their relationship um to this club and how so many of their benchmark moments hopes dreams and feelings are uh that corollary between that and the club is just unbelievable so and and also the stories are just falling off the trees out there. I mean, it's it's incredible to walk around, talk to people. You just you can't believe uh, the the kind of character they have. It's really something. And, and we knew that that would maybe draw people that I, that we would be able to draw people to at least attention to 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 come and watch the first episode. But that it really would get old very quickly just yeah. watching the two of us bumble around. And and ultimately, those weren't the stories we wanted to tell. We wanted to tell the stories that we believe in, in a, as a sports fan, um, that most sports fans don't understand is that actually uh, sports are not about triumph. They are, they are, they are actually about loss and despair and, and, and because that's the vast majority of what being a fan is. And how do you overcome adversity? 
And if you can transcend sport and talk about that as people uh, are going through cancer or going through difficult thing, uh, mental uh, issues in their lives or literally just trying to get through the day on a basic wage uh, through, through as the cost of living is, is being raised, we thought that that would be a much com more compelling show. That and fi a fish out of water is really a C plot. You know, uh, you, yeah. you, you're, how are you going to contain? You can't. Sustainability isn't there with that sort of mindset. So yeah, it was a no brainer. Well, also we look at sports movies like Bull Durham or Hoosiers, and they're not really sports movies. It's about relationships and trying to yeah, capture yeah. those relationships is why we invest. Like I want to invest in somebody that I would never invest in, and that's what you guys were able to capture. Like. Uh, there was a Leeds United documentary. I watched it, uh, Sunderland Till I Die. I watched it. I'm like, I don't even care, but I cared so damn much about it. And that's, yeah, yeah. Like, like you guys go from scripted, this is non-scripted. How much yeah. do you, tr can you control anything or do you want to control anything with well, that? The, the, the one, one thing I, 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 I could speak to that is, is that, you know, Wrexham is, is, yeah, it's a town in North Wales, but it's also a town in Pennsylvania. It's a town in uh, uh, Saskatchewan, Canada. It's a town. It's, it's it's Australia. It's Brazil. It's all. It's everywhere. I mean, there's working class town. People see themselves in that. And that that story to me is quite, uh, quite evergreen. Um, uh, but you know, the the thing that I I I I probably you know will never ever forget is that first step. That first time we went to Wrexham because what, what I think the thing that's most insane about the story is we couldn't go there because it was the apex of the, of the pandemic. We couldn't actually go there. So we had sort of assumed stewardship of this club before ever, you know, touching a blade of grass in the race course, which is just, you know, this is the most financially irresponsible <laughs> endeavor you would ever possibly find. It's just absolute idiocy on paper. But, you know, we don't know that much about financial investment necessarily, but what we do love and something we've loved in our whole adult lives is emotional investment. And emotional investment can kind of create that moat around something. And I feel like that moat is around Wrexham and, and, and it is special for that reason. So have you guys well, people have... ask people ask me um, all the time too like, well what are my what are my favorite document sports documentaries and like what are the biggest influences in making the show? And then I'll say, it's actually not a documentary. And then they'll say, oh, it's got to be Rocky because we make a lot of Rocky references. And clearly there's a lot of um, Rocky in my life and a, rock, a lot of Rocky in the story. But the truth of the matter is that the, the, the movie that has been the most influential and the one that I want the show to feel most like is Field of Dreams. Which is not a movie about baseball. Yeah. At of all. course not. Like it's, you know, of course not. It's, a fa it's, a, it's about a father and a son. And that is exactly the story that we want to tell. Almost every movie, movie I've ever produced, I've stolen the score <laughs> from Field of Dreams, and that's been our temp score for the whole thing. And I realized uh, the last couple of years that it's just cheating. Nothing will ever live up to it, so stop doing it. So I don't. They are the owners of Wrexham AFC. We're talking to Ryan Reynolds, Rob McElhaney, joining us. Season three of FX's Welcome to Wrexham premieres with two episodes on May 2nd at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific on FX. Available the next day on Hulu. If you guys played in an exhibition match, how would you fare? Oh, God. I mean, if the exhibition match was in the lobby of a hospital, I think I'd be all right. I mean, you know, given how close the proximity is for medical attention. But uh, no. What, what position would I play? I mean, I, I, I think that the thing that, the thing that, because you just can't help it, you're like, well, I'm in pretty good shape. Maybe I could <laughs> yeah. keep up a little bit. No. And, and at the end of one of the games, we, we had Charlie Day and the rest of the cast of Sunny Camp come out. And the guys had already played the game. And what they do is they warm down at the end of the games, which is tragic that they just run six miles at full speed, but they still have to warm down. So they're running a very slow pace. And Charlie's like, I'm going to sprint with these guys to see if I can keep up. And they're, at, they're running at half speed and he is running at full speed and he could barely make it across the pitch. The, the greatest song uh, ever written was the sound of Charlie Day's hamstring snap <laughs> uh, toward the center line at the Wrexham race course ground. <laughs> like a beautiful harp. <laughs> uh, uh, Ryan, are you going to have Blake maybe be your Taylor Swift with the franchise here? Well, there is only one Taylor Swift, and there will never be another mm. Taylor Swift. Mm. But so, but 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 Blake is uh, as emotionally invested as anyone. I mean, she's been to a ton of matches. Uh, well, can you, you get know, Taylor she's... to show up? Maybe is you know 
That would be a coup. Uh, yeah, I would love that, actually. Um, I, I know for sure the Kelsey yeah. brothers are coming out to a game, so <laughs> yeah. it's just a matter of That's time. season See, four. That's our, that's our, that's our backdoor that's, plan. Yeah, that's, <laughs> to, yeah that's, how you, that's how you lure the queen bee. Are you, uh, are, are you still trying to buy a hockey team, Ryan? No, sir. No? Not at all. Ottawa? No. Uh, no, uh, no. I, I love Ottawa. I spent time there, uh, as a kid. I lived in Vanier, uh, and, um, but no, that is, uh, that is, uh, not, not happening. No. All right. So just one franchise is all you can have. This is, I mean, look, I wake up in the morning, 80% of the emails in my inbox are, have to do with Wrexham. <laughs> I mean, it's, this is a, I'm chewing and blowing bubbles with Wrexham all the live long day. I don't, there's nothing, there's no room for anything else. So. But have you ever said, hon, I just bought a midfielder? Like, do you, do you ever have one of those days where, <laughs> you, you know, wait, what are you doing? Ah, I got a striker, you know? Well, it's like beer. You're borrowing it, really. Uh yeah, you know, you're, I don't think you're buying or or, or owning, uh, but yeah. It's... But yeah, but we are investing heavily into those players. But yes, it's the same. It's it, it's actually a lot like golf, where like you could have, as everybody knows that plays golf, nobody cares about how you played golf. And so I, I'll come home and I'll be like, "Honey, I shot an 80. and she's like, "Oh my god, do the dishes." And I'm like, "I get it." Yeah. Uh, so, but it's a similar thing where I'm like, "Honey, we just we just." like signed a midfielder and she's like oh my god congratulations <laughs> she's actually really no, legitimately no, excited uh it's like it, so that that's a really a really good feeling there she's very much invested in the club yeah. well hopefully you guys will, uh are you still acting are you guys gonna act or you giving up acting so I'm sorry, Dan. We're out oh, of time. No. Oh, oh no if you could please wrap oh, this that would be oh, great. That's, well that's a cliffhanger never, <laughs> let me say one. Let me say one thing before you go, because I've met you in person many times, yeah. and I've said this to you already. But I'd like to say it on your show, um, and I'm sure you've, you've, you hear this from so many people. But you are such a huge part uh, of of my generation, and so many people uh, younger than me, and maybe a little bit older, uh, in bringing the story of sports to life uh, in a way that I'd never seen before. To bring, uh, you literally created it. Um, the 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 comedy. Uh, but also the excitement and to present it in a way to a, new, a whole new generation of sporting fan, I believe actually like changed sports. And so uh, I think that you uh, in particular have just been um, a, a, a beacon and, and, a, and a guiding force for us to be able to do what we do. So One of the great storytellers, that I know we're running out of time a long time ago, but I also want to say that, that, that I was so nervous the first time I got to meet you and it was at Super Bowl 2016 in San, San Francisco. Francisco. And I sat on your show there, and I was uh, uh, utterly geeked out because you've been one of the great sports storytellers of a generation, and I'm very, very, very grateful to have got to actually sit down uh, in the hot seat with you. It and, felt and, like uh, Rob was sincere. You weren't as sincere with that, Ryan. No, I'm just competing <laughs> with Rob. I wasn't at Super Bowl uh, in 2016. That was uh, okay. that was Ben Affleck. Okay. Yeah. Uh, good but I, I like that you. I love that you can't take a compliment just <laughs> yeah, like no, no. just like we can't. Can so all. that's fine. You just deflect. Yeah. You just deflect. Yeah, you go ahead. Have a great day, everybody, and, Thanks, and, and Thanks, good luck guys. to season three. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank sir. you. That's uh, Ryan Reynolds, Rob McElhaney. <laughs> season three of FX is welcome to Wrexham. Yeah, the moderator interrupts us. His face, Ryan Reynolds' face, <laughs> when you hear, I'm sorry, Dan, we're out of time. His face was absolutely hilarious. That was priceless. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Welcome to Wrexham tomorrow at 10 Eastern and Pacific on FX.